Welcome back to Scholastically Natalie. Um, sorry for the background noise. I currently have an air conditioner on and it's it's a bit of a noisy boy. Um, it's great for me to sleep, but for anything else, it's a little loud. I suppose next time I'll try my closet. Thank you, Matt Pat, for that wonderful inspiration. I honestly never would have thought about it. <laughs> okay, anyway, so as I still haven't managed to get my paws on a desk and I haven't gotten creative enough to start flopping onto the floor and trying things that way, I'll try that next time I record. Um, I wanted to still move on with Let's Roll and catering to players, which is definitely more of a DM thought process than just a general player thought process. Again, I might not say anything that you will find useful, and I might even say things that you disagree with. So feel free to let me know. So, first of all, I want to talk about like cooperative gameplay, because D&D is a cooperative game. You can't have fun playing D&D if everybody is competing against each other, or like the DM is outwardly trying to murder you and not for fun, because they can just kill you and it's not fun. <laughs> um, so both the players and the DM have to work together to make a satisfying story. Like, if you're currently beefing with one of your players, you're probably not going to have a great time because you're definitely going to subconsciously influence like how you're treating them. So, um, I definitely struggle with my players sometimes. I am so much more of a reactive DM. Um, the players will be like, oh, I want to do this, or oh, they seem to be having fun like interacting with this NPC. So I don't force them out of that interaction. I don't really rush them on stuff. Um, basically, I'm just kind of like, yeah, you can do this thing. And if they're, if they're like, um, heck no, we'd much rather go explore this mountain, I will go let them explore that mountain. <laughs> Um, and so oftentimes I found myself, you know, having players be like, oh, I want this thing. And I'm like, I have no clue why you want that thing, but I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to find it. Um, oftentimes it's weird things that I don't really know how to accommodate in the game. And I am a terrible human. I have a brain like a sieve. If you mention something to me, I will 10 out of 10 forget it. Um... It's really bad, actually. <laughs> I have to, like, write myself notes so that I don't forget something that somebody said to me in conversation. So, um, what I personally do is that my player's interests have to be my interest. Like, if somebody wants to start becoming an author selling, like, books about their adventures, I need to accommodate that. I shouldn't be like, oh, well, nobody would ever want to publish it, because it's something so small. Like, I gave them money for it, but if you don't, you can still give them just a little bit of money, just eke it out, but it's still just a kind of like a fun side hobby. Um, most of the time I can twist my way around to get a player something they want, but I am definitely not perfect at this, and it can take a lot of work sometimes, either on my behalf or on the player's behalf. So, um, I've had some different players with very different needs. Um, I've had players who changed their mind essentially halfway through a campaign, and then <laughs> I have my second player, who I'm definitely going to be talking about later, who chased an answer throughout the entirety of their campaign, and I only gave them concrete ones on the last session. Again, I'm evil. So, um, number, there's like about three things I want to talk about. Number one is players with really specific requests. Um, like my roommate, she's pretty much my best friend. She'll be like, oh, I really want this certain thing. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we can do that. We can, we can get that started. You can redeem it at some point or get it as a reward. You're not necessarily going to get it immediately, but we can work you to a point where you get that. Um, and then sometimes I'll have players who specifically want some sort of goal that they're reaching, um, or who are trying to gain a certain amount of influence. And that's definitely something I'm more than willing to work with them towards. Sometimes it has to, like, eke in next to the main storyline. I have had quite a few players who are doing things in secret, which is always a lot of fun for me, personally. So the number two, there's some players just with goals. Like, they don't want a status change, they don't want a specific item. Some of them just want information. 
for answers. Specifically, my one player who is searching for answers the entire campaign. Um, and sometimes they have no clue what exactly they're looking for. Like, again, some of them are like, okay, I want to find this certain thing out. And I'm like, sweet, I'll give you opportunities to do so throughout, like, you know, this campaign. But then, you know, they won't know what specific thing to ask about. They won't know what they're actually looking for because I am a bad human and didn't give them enough detail. And so oftentimes I find myself saying, hey, if you were, if you want something specific out of this, please tell me because I will give you more information about that. Like if you're gearing up for a specific maneuver or like a specific answer, tell me and I'll give you the information you need. Um, you know, because I don't want to have you miss out on an opportunity to do something you think would be cool or like that you would just have fun doing just because you just don't have all the information you need. And so then number three, I have had quite a few players that just don't have any specific purpose. They're just here for the ride. Honestly, sometimes they're my favorite. Like the party leader we ended up having during my campaign was just kind of like, I'm just doing whatever I feel like. And then just dragged everyone else with her, um, which was honestly really amusing. Um, and sometimes everybody else would be like, well, can we do this thing? And she'd be like, sure, why not? <laughs> um, and then there are also some players that, like, they want something, but they can't tell me what they want. Or they, like, don't want to tell me what they want. And I'm just kind of like, I sure, I don't know what to do for you, though. And that, in particular, definitely makes me pretty frustrated because I'm like, dude, just tell me what you want from me. Because um, otherwise you're getting at how my brain thinks you want it, and sometimes that is not how people want things. So, I would like to do more in-depth talks about this. I certainly have some very specific answer, well not answers, some very specific players that I want to talk about. Um, of course they will not be named, I just might have to call them by their character name or something because I don't want to accidentally dox anyone. Um, and I certainly find myself struggling a lot with just, you know, kind of a stepping back from being a giant control freak. Because, again, remember, I was an education major, and I think to be an education major, you definitely have to be like, well, I want to do things in a specific way, and things should happen in that specific way. Um, and I will admit, I definitely struggle with things not going that specific way. Or, you know, if outside of D&D, somebody is kind of being like, oh, why don't we do this and why don't we do that? I definitely take it as more of like a personal attack rather than just kind of like a commentary on the story, which I have gotten better about. I, I It's taken me a bit. I've kind of come to terms with the fact that sometimes I'm not hitting everything that everybody needs to hit and I should be taking that criticism with a little bit more grace um, but it definitely did feel like a personal attack to me when you know somebody's telling me not to hold my D&D campaign every single week and do every other week or something um, but most of the time I have been blessed with characters who are more than happy to be a driving force behind a campaign and I feel like I am much rather be a reactive DM. Not that I think that anybody who is like an inciting DM um, is doing it wrong. That's just like a personal preference. Clearly, I prefer to be a reac reactionary DM. Um, mostly because the players all make their own choices. I leave them to a much more democratic way of sorting things out. Like, they, none of them have like some overarching goal that they all need to accomplish. They're all just kind of like we're here, we're gonna do this thing, we're gonna do that thing, we're kind of just gonna have fun. I've I've never had a particularly intensely serious campaign. I will admit I was trying to have one when I first started out, but with everybody's attitudes about it and how I discovered when I was DMing and my attitude about it, it ended up being a bit more loose and more fun. Um, and I... I still want players to take it, like, semi-seriously, like, I'm not just gonna give you, like, crack weapons or, like, stupid things like that, but there will definitely be jokes about, you know, fantasy Walmart and <laughs> things like that, and there will 
I'll certainly give you overpowered items, but then you also have to accept that you're going to go up against things maybe twice your CR. <laughs> and then you have to find your way out of that one. Um, I don't know. I definitely find myself regretting some things that I did during my campaign and feeling good about other things I've done and kind of regretting some missed chances that I got to have with my players because I was busy being a idiot. <laughs> All things that I'm sure everybody can get once in a while, even without it being D&D related. But I'm more than happy to go back over my campaign with a fine tooth comb because I feel like kind of like admitting your faults and seeing where you could have done better is 10 out of 10 the perfect way to improving yourself for the future. I have friends that I was running a summer campaign for. We haven't played in a long while, which I do miss because I have a lot of fun with them. And I mean, we can't really play right now as it is because none of us have seen each other in about a year, maybe. Um, and personally, I like my parents how they are, so I'm not sure what we would do about that. But I am very grateful for all the players I've had, and I've had such fun times with them. Um, and it is hard to not be deeply invested in your campaign, and like, it's hard not to take things as personal attacks, because sometimes being a DM is that everything that's happening is something that's coming out of your own brain. It's something that you've thought up and that you're executing, and having that criticized can feel sometimes like they're trying to hurt you, which of course they're not. Like, if you have good players, I should preface this with, if you have players who are, you know, nice to you, or at least, you know, good people who aren't trying to make you suffer through your efforts, they're only trying to help you. Maybe they're seeing that you're stressed and that they're like, hey, you could probably use taking some time off. Or they're trying to say that there is something that they wish could have been improved. And I think those are some pretty valid criticisms to raise. I'm just slowly realizing the fact that I was a bit graceless taking some of the criticism that I received. And I do regret it, but I also probably wouldn't take back a majority of what I did because I found it very amusing at the same time. I am definitely a little bit of a sadist when it comes to being a DM. I enjoy watching my players groan and suffer. As long as they are still laughing a little bit while they suffer, I am so happy for it. <laughs> um, okay, I feel like I've rambled on for long enough. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope I've said something that's mildly useful for you. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and if you're interested you can find me on Instagram at Horde of a Dice Dragon. Scholastically Natalie, out.